Hi everyone, this is Kavya Chandra and in today's video, I'll show you how to register and scan from SAP ECC and SAP S4HANA instances. First, let us understand what the prerequisites are. The first prerequisite is to have the latest version of the self-hosted integration runtime installed on your VM. Second, install JDK 11 on your virtual machine where SHIR is installed. Third, we need to install Visual C++ redistributable 2012 update 4 on the same virtual machine. Fourth, make sure to have a Java connector available on your virtual machine where SHIR is installed. Uh, some of the files that are needed are sapjco3.jar and sapjco3.dll. Please note, the driver should be, in, should be accessible to all accounts in the VM, so do not install it in any user account. Fifth, deploy the metadata extraction ABAP function module on your SAP server by following the steps mentioned in the deployment guide. Uh, you'll need an ABAP developer account to create RFC function module on the SAP server. So make sure you have permissions to connect to an SAP server and execute the two commandlets or the RFC function modules such as STFC underscore connection to check the connectivity and RFC underscore system underscore info to check the system information. And the last prerequisite is to install a 64-bit SAP connector for Microsoft.NET 3.0. Um, while installing this, make sure you select the Install Assemblies to GSE option in the Optional Setup Steps window. With this, let us move on to a demo. So this is my Azure Purview catalog. Uh, for today's demo, I'll be registering and scanning um, an SAP ECC data source. Um, the same steps will hold good for SAP S4HANA source as well. So in order to register an SAP ECC source, let's click on register sources style. Click on register, look for SAP ECC and click on continue. Let's give a friendly name here. Uh, the application server, it can either be a name of the application server or an IP address of the application server host to connect to. So in this case, I'll be providing an application server name. And next, a system number uh, is a two-digit integer between 00 and 99, which is, which is also an instance ID of the ABAP instance. So in this case, I would be giving 00. And then I'll already, I'll choose a collection that I've already set up or created. So the, which is a demo collection. And next I'll click on register. So this is a new registered source. Uh, before we can set up a new scan, let's make sure um, an integration runtime is running. So let's go to the management center. under the integration runtimes section. Let's make sure we have a uh, self-hosted integration runtime already running, which is the case here. So I'll go back to sources. And now I can set up a new scan on SAP ECC source. So I'll once again provide a friendly name. Next, I'll use the IR that was running. Uh, in, in terms of credential, um, we again use user ID and password, um, which is the basic authentication that's supported here. I've already stored um, in an AKB my uh, password associated to SAP ECC instances user ID. And I'll be configuring or I'll be using the same uh, for the demo as well. And then in the client ID, this is the SAP system client ID, which is again a three digit um, uh, uh, number from 000 to 999. In my case, it is 800. JQuery library path is the next 
uh, input parameter uh, to fetch the metadata from uh, an SAP instance we need to have the Java connector library available on the VM so this in this field I'll be providing the path where I have uh, the SAP jco3.jar and SAP jco3.dll files located on my VM. So this is the path on my VM. Next is the maximum memory available field. Uh, in this field, we need to specify the uh, the size in GB that's that can be utilized for the scanning processes. Uh, this once again depends on the size of the data source. Since in this case, uh, the SAP ECC instance is pretty big, um, I'll be providing 100 GB um, in this particular field. Next is use default cache location. We can either choose the default location or if we want the cache to be saved in a different path, we can provide that as well. I'll go ahead and use the default cache location. I'll now test connection. Now that my connection is successful, I click on continue. I'll have this triggered only once, so I'll click on once option here. I'll review my scan and I'll save and run. While this scan runs, I already have a different SAP ECC instance that I have uh, triggered a scan on. Let's take a look at the details. And as you can see, um, the scan was successfully completed and I already have 1.2 million sets discovered in my catalog. Let us also go to the browse assets tile take a look at what's inside this SAP ECC instance. I'll click on the server and these are the different packages that are part of the server. You see there's only one class here. Okay, so this is a good one. So in under this particular package, we have various function groups, programs, tables, class, uh, and other entities. So let's quickly take a look at the table entity. So in the overview tab, uh, like any other data source, we show the des description, classification, different properties, and the hierarchy on the right here. Under the schema tab, we show the column names of this particular table. I don't think there's a lineage here, but let me just quickly grab a view wherein I can show the lineage. So this is an example of a view where, once again, we show the properties in the overview tab. Schema, we show the different column names. And in the lineage, um, as you can see here, uh, we depict how um, there is lineage from an SAP ECC table to a view via a process called SAP ECC view query. So with this, I conclude this video where we learned how to register and scan an SAP ECC server. Uh, the same process can be followed for uh, registering and scanning from um, an SAP S4 HANA data source as well. Thank you.